Okay, hi, Paul Slack. It's Good News Planet. I'm here with The Psychology of Giving by Dr. Serena Deutsch. No, actually, I'm not with The Psychology of Living, even though Serena is a psych- psych- psychoanalyst, analyst, psychotherapist, and this is all good news. And uh, she's coming to us from a good friend, Jewel Hannon, and uh, because... I've heard about you and the good things that you're doing, and we're here to share your joy, I guess, uh, of the joy kinds of things word. you're doing. Um, tell, tell, us, tell us some of the good things that you like to do in regard to helping the world move forwards in a nicer way. Well, um, I, do work, uh, I do work locally um, and uh, nationally and I also do work globally um, around the world. Um, I'm vice president of One Bright World. I'm uh, where we're helping to um, rebuild the educational and medical infrastructure in Liberia um, and helping children, um, you know, restore their dreams, you know, fulfill their dreams, you know, give them an opportunity to read and to learn and to, um, and to inspire them. Uh, I went to Liberia and, um, and after the 14 year war under Charles Taylor, they, it's like they were stripped away of their dreams, you know, about 250,000 people were killed, a lot of their parents. I visited the, um, the uh, um, orphanages and um, uh, and you know the faith in these people I have to say um, you know I rode around for three days with um, the driver you know from from the, the UN um, uh, United Nation mission in Liberia and I saw things and I thought I'm coming from comfortable New York and I when I was there 90% of it is unpaved and the poverty is something that is I can't even put in words and the kids were I went to the different tribes and villages and they were singing and they were dancing and I was dancing with them and they were you know um, I didn't see actually um, you know, there were very few, if any, Caucasian people there, and it's like they just saw me as just somebody that was going to help them. And they, their faces lit up when I got out of the, you know, car, and they came running to me, and and um, when I asked them their dreams, and it's actually on the internet, um, they want to read like the doctor, and they want to be a doctor like the doctor, and and um, and I'm also doing some work in uh, so that's one bright world, and I'm doing some work in Ghana, um, where we're going to be um, educating children um, in Accra, and we're going to be. Um, really helping them. I think in Africa it's about education and it's also about really helping to restore um, and help people work because I think something that I was struck by in Liberia is there were a lot of people that aren't working. So we're going to be um, teaching them how to get involved in a project we have there on renewable energy. Um, a lot of the new villages that we're building in Africa are green. And um, so, and that's something I'm doing. And I am uh, vice president of, of this uh, NGO in Ghana. And I'm also vice president of Innocence in Danger um, with Hime Rosselier. And, um, and we're really trying to, um, uh, there's a lot of uh, children that are um, sexually abused. Um, and I think with the advance of technology um, uh, on the internet, 
there's children being trafficked. Um, there are um, there's abuses out there, and um, one of the things that I'm doing, um, the, and a piece that I am um, um, adding, you know, and bringing to innocence and danger, is um, is uh, really teaching children, and something I'm doing in the city, in New York City, at the private schools, um, and in my office, in seminars is teaching children how to be safe on the internet. Teaching children, you know, it's um, uh, something my friend Jewel, you know, often quotes me on, but it's, you know, um, when we want to drive a car, we need a license. We have to learn what the rules are. We have to learn how to drive a car. And we could give a four-year-old, a five-year-old, you know, a piece of technology, and it could be very dangerous. There are people out there they don't know, and I think it's important to really teach them. I've developed contracts where you're teaching them, you know, not to go off with strangers, get to know people, not to give information about themselves, and to really, um, how to be safe, how to really empower themselves um, when they use technology. And uh, some other things I do... I you're think, one busy person. I know you're doing so many things. Let me ask you a question. Why, what, what got you please. involved with these kinds of things? Where, where do you think it stems from? Um, where does it stem from? I feel very blessed in the way I grew up. Um, I have a very large family, lots of cousins, lots of aunts and uncles, um, two very loving parents um, who were very giving. Uh, and um, there are actually studies, um, and I talk about it in, uh, in the article I wrote uh, for this, this book. Um, there are studies that show that we actually produce endorphins when we give. That's not why, I mean, it just feels good to give. It feels good to help people. It feels good, for me, it feels good to put a smile on someone's face. Um, and how did I get involved in it? it um, I could say um, uh, intellectually, I want to make the world a better place. I want to leave it, you know, a tad better than I found it. Um, but I could also just simply say, it just feels good to give. It feels good to be compassionate. It feels good to help people. It feels good to put a smile on someone's face. Um, I showed you some pictures of the children I met when I was in Liberia, and um, when they started singing and dancing for me, and I got up and was singing and dancing with them, they were smiling, I was smiling, and everybody was happy. I mean, it, it just feels good to do that. And so I just kept developing more and more of this. And interestingly, it almost becomes infectious. People meet me if I'm giving a talk at the UN, or if I'm giving a talk in the city, or if I'm giving a talk at one of the private schools. And, um, and people come up to me at the, you know, after I give my talk. And they say they were so inspired. And would I be willing to give a talk, you know, with some university or somewhere else? And somehow it just, it's almost like I open one door and walk through, and then that door opens the door to other things. And all of a sudden I find that I'm doing things that helping people in places that I didn't know I'd be. Yay! Last question. What's good news for you? What's good news for me? Um, putting smiles on people's faces. That's as good as it gets. Thank you so much, Dr. Serena Deutsch. Thank you.